Today, I want to share with you some notes that I took from a conversation that I had with a C-suite leader because this leader was consulting me with how they could drive organizational success. In fact, they're a little bit newer at their role, and so they really wanted to just make sure they were able to get their team calibrated and moving forward toward the metrics that they had to hit and the mission and the vision of the organization. So I wanted to come on and share some of the insights that I shared with this particular individual in hopes that it will help you to understand what your role is in driving the success of your organization. Because whether you know it or not, you have a big impact on the trajectory the trajectory and the achievements that your organization will accomplish. So you are truly the architect of success, which is why you have been put into a position of much responsibility and much power. Um, if I was to be frank about it, you shape the culture of your organization, of your leadership team, of the outcomes of the patients that you serve, of your community, of the ecosystem of the healthcare within which your community lives in and breathes in, as well as what you live in and breathe in. And so it's very important that you understand that it goes beyond you just managing the operations and making strategic decisions in the name of the success of your key stakeholders and your organizations and the patients that you serve, you have the power to inspire and you have the power to motivate and you have the power to reach extraordinary heights, which extend beyond the targets and the metrics that we are held to when it comes to our own organizational goals and targets, as well as those that we have to meet in relation to the regulating bodies that we also have to answer to. So through your vision, you set the tone for where your organization and your culture is going to lead. So you need to be able to not only come up with a vision, not excluding your individual vision for yourself and how you want to lead yourself through self-leadership, but also through the way you want your organization to move and to progress as they move forward. And so not only are you the creator of the vision, you know, the higher up that you get, part of your role is to create the vision, but you also need to be able to clearly articulate this vision in a way that hits deep into the hearts of the teams that you lead so that you can rally them and align them behind the actions and the efforts and the shared goals that you want to accomplish, that you need to accomplish in order to deem yourselves successful. And your ability to communicate this vision effectively is what is going to create this sense of purpose and ignite passion and commitment within every individual in your organization. And you're going to find that a lot of the times we spend our energy investing in these archaic, to me, archaic leadership theories where we are focusing on the what. What does it take to be a good leader? And as we progress through the years, what we're finding is that leadership is still struggling. And that's because I feel like we're not asking the right questions. And I want you to ask yourself this question in relation to this video that I'm, these notes that I'm sharing with you in this video. And it's all about who are you? Who are you when you show up? when you want to inspire, when you want to influence, when you want to align people, who are you showing up as? Who are you? And if you ask yourself that question, what you will find that it doesn't matter. You can study every transformational leader under the sun and you can actually compile a list of those traits. In fact, I did a podcast episode all about the traits of transformational leaders, but I also pointed out that transformational leadership is a myth because it's not about you taking these traits and trying them on in your own leadership practice. True transformational leadership goes deeper than what we think it is and it goes into looking at the people that we deem to be transformational, what you'll find is that there's a level of emotional intelligence and vision and purpose and leadership, which 
is something that is much deeper than taking a leadership style or leadership theory and applying it into your own life without doing the deeper work to embody the traits that you have to embody in order to actually live and breathe that type of a leadership. So in addition to this vision, I was sharing with this individual that your leadership style and your the way that you lead yourself is instrumental in fostering this culture of excellence that we all talk about. But again, you know, the reports are out there. A lot of us are not excellent. We pretend like we're excellent on LinkedIn and all the things, but behind the scenes, we're all, a lot of a lot of us are struggling. So <laughs> part of this um, can be rectified by your leadership. And it's about what kind of what I just said, embodying and exemplifying the values and behaviors that you expect from your teams. And I don't just mean like from your team, because sometimes we do the right thing at work, but then we go home and our life is a hot mess. Our history is a hot mess. Our psychology is a hot mess. Some of the trauma that we need to deal with is still lingering and it's a hot mess. So for me and the way that I teach my clients to be better leaders and the way that I bring this into the organizations that I serve is to be the person that you not only expect from your teams, but be the, the highest version of yourself that you can be day in, day out. You know, you try to get better and better every day because you're setting the standard of performance and driving this relentless pursuit of excellence. And you can't truly be someone of excellence if you're messy and some areas of life, but then in other areas of life, you have an unlock. Excellence, true excellence is really striving for a standard and making that standard a non-negotiation in all areas of your life. And so the way that you show up and your influence shapes your organization's values, ethic, work environment, and it ultimately will shape the experiences that your employees experience and the overall success of the organization. It even shapes it much more than whatever you already have on paper. We all have these company handbooks, these code of ethics, all of those things. But at the end of the day, what sets the tone is going to start with you as a high level leader. You possess this unique ability to cultivate and develop the talent within your organization and what you can do to help to foster the movement forward is to also look at your organization and how you can then impart what you know and what you've learned into the minds and the souls of the emerging leaders in your organization as well. I think that we do ourselves a disservice by, even if we're doing our personal leadership work, not investing in the leadership and the success of the leaders that are going to be up and coming in an organization. So as a high level leader, I think that it is imperative for you to nurture the emerging leaders within your organization. It starts with you, but then you're able to build this pipeline of exceptional individuals who drive this growth and this innovation. So guess what that does for you? It makes your job easier. It makes your life easier because it's not all dependent on you. When you grow yourself up and then you grow up the other leaders in your team to perform at a high level, then it becomes innovative. It becomes creative. It becomes collaborative. It becomes easy for you because you are all showing up on the same level, that level of excellence, that level of innovation, that level of high performance that's going to really impact the way that your organization performs and the way that you perform and the way that everybody else in it performs. Make sure you're nurturing your emerging leaders as a high level leader. Another thing that you can do that I shared with this leader was adapting to industry changes. We all have to adapt, right? Especially if it's something that we have to be reactive about. We have no choice. We just got to get it done and do what we need to do. And we all learned that over the past few years. But I'm not talking about adaptive where something happens and then you are reactionary and you just get the job done. That's exhausting, at least to burnout. And we all are noticing the repercussions in healthcare of operating in that way. Being able to adapt to industry changes is another big part of the role that you bring to the table as a high level leader. And it's not about being reactionary and 
responding to the things that are going on as you face them. It's actually about having the strategic mindset to navigate these complex challenges, seize opportunities through creativity and anticipation and stay ahead of industry trends. When you learn to be a leader that embraces innovation, you foster a culture of continuous growth, evolution, and learning, and you encourage this creative problem solving that is going to help you position your organization for sustained success in this rapidly evolving world of healthcare. It is a vital role that you play. <laughs> you play a huge role in driving the success of your organization, your vision, your values, your talent, uh, your ability to shape the destiny of your organization, all the things. You have the power to inspire your teams and create this environment where individuals thrive and you're able to lead your organization to new heights. So as I conclude this video, I wanted, I just want you to reflect on the immense impact and, and value that you can bring to your organization and the role that you have to play in your organization as a high level leader. And I want you to embrace your role and nurture your skills so that you continue to grow and you continue to evolve as a leader. Because I want you, I want us together to create this atmosphere in this future where organizations are able to flourish under the guidance of exceptional leadership. That's what we need. That's where we need to be headed. That's where we need to be focused. And if we continue to make that an afterthought or invest in these outdated programs, what we're going to find is that we're going to continue to struggle year after year, decade after decade, and not really make the progress that we could make if we truly invest it in the things that are really going to move the needle on the dial when it comes to healthcare excellence, performance, and great outcomes. If you want to learn more about how you can bring this type of information into your organization through workshops, through group training, or you as an individual high-level leader just want some more help and support around how you can do the professional and personal work to be able to embark on your leadership journey and do it in a way that you are embodying excellence and you are inspiring excellence, then I'll have some information wherever you're listening or watching this video to reach out to me and we can talk about how we can work together to make uh, things like this happen within your organization or in your personal leadership practice. All right, take care. Talk to you later. Bye.